How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massive Beer Reviews, back with yet another review. A little bit of new brewery time in the form of Tombstone Brewing's Comet Single Hop IPA. Never heard of Tombstone Brewing before. Heard of the movie Tombstone. Pretty fantastic fucking movie. Uh, but yeah, these guys are out of the Arizona. I've never had them before, obviously. And this comes courtesy of Eric. Thank you very much, brother. He, um was a uh, Ohio resident and moved to Arizona and shot me off a beer mail. So that's pretty fucking awesome of them. Uh, what does this say in here? Keep cold, drink fresh. No shit. Uh, Tombstone Brewing Company. Uh, Comet Single Hop IPA. 7.1% alcohol by volume. Story time. Uh, we recently went to Oregon to select lots of hops from 2018 Harvest. We're blown away by, blown away by this year's Comet crop. Intensively aromatic, tropical, and citrusy with fragrant lemongrass and herbal notes we knew it would be perfect for a single hop ipa we think you will be amazed by how much complexity can come from a single hop variety um yeah no canning date that's kind of poopy poopy madoopy yeah done and done label wise pretty uninspiring stuff really not much there i mean you know they got their little tombstone logo up there looks like a brewery <laughs> there want preconceived notion time it looks like a brewery that's been around for a while that kind of either, well, where is it? They just started or they've been around for a while and just started canning stuff. That's kind of my vibe. But I don't know. I'm just judging a book by its cover. I love doing that, to be perfectly honest with you. So let's see what we got. Oh, she's a hazy. She's a dark hazy, though. She's like a nectarine kind of um, juice kind of hazy. She has a rich darkness to her. Look at that. It's like almost like a like blood orange juice. It's like a rich orange character, but it has a, like a, a a drop of like red food coloring, and it just kind of bringing a little bit of extra depth to it. Yeah, pretty dark. It has that kind of cataracty edges, and not much of a head to speak of. But yeah, you're talking about a 7.1 percent IPA, single hop. I mean, I've never seen something that color, single hopped in the IPA realm. It's kind of weird that they, I mean, there's probably some kind of, like, malt that's probably heavily oated with a, a little bit darker malt than you usually use. So it's kind of added that little bit of kind of ruby tones to that kind of dark haziness. That's my guess. But let's get a nose. Yeah, I can kind of get that, too, because there's a nice fruit comp uh, component to it. There's a nice, hmm, what is that? It's like a tropical fruit, but it's something that comes off a little bit tart. But not in the sour way, in more of a tart, acidic kind of way. But not in the sour kind of way, the way actual sweet fruit can come off. Yeah, it's got this rich kind of... I'm, I'm, I'm going to default to melon. I've been singing melon a lot lately, but I believe, you know, hop, uh, hop harvests are like, you know, autumnal. You know, and uh, I think they rotate um, throughout the seasons, and I see a lot of breweries, their kind of notes and things that you get in s some of the beers outside of like the upper echelon super crazy breweries that just shoot for the same exact consistent hops all the time. I, I feel like um, the hop crops rotate from season to season to where you actually get a consistent kind of change between hop crops. This is just a theory in my own brain, I've never actually researched it. But I'm getting a lot of melon lately, and I feel like that's because that's way of a lot of the hop crops have been coming off. Especially if you go up to Yakima and stuff like that. Everybody's pretty much getting it from the same place. But it's like a combination of like a big, huge mango with a, a decent amount of bubblegum. With like a little bit of tart acidic fruit to it. Like lychee or some shit like that. And then um, a little bit of soft kind of like, it's almost like a... It's not rye malt. There's a maltiness to it, but there's a little bit of spiciness to it. It's all over the place. It's very aggressive for single hop, but it is 7.1%, so it's a higher ABV beer. So it's a little bit bigger than more your traditional single hop beers, which tend to be a little bit lower ABV. I find it interesting. I think the nose is fun, but I could see it going sideways. Let's see what she tastes like. Cheers. Big letdown. Yeah, big letdown. First things first. This is the 3rd of January 2019. So, 
I have no time or date on this can, so you guys can kind of do the whole sleuthing for me and tell me how old this can is. But the way that nose came off, you had that kind of combination of that mango and bubblegum and like lychee and the whole thing going on that was kind of fun in the nose and very interesting. But it's in the taste, it's very watered down. There's like a soft, slightly nutty, slightly cereal like graininess. Not texture, but taste cereal grain, comma, enus. Um, the actual beer. So it's definitely malt forward. You get an acidic citrus note to it, but it's not carrying much distinct flavor with it. Mm. Yeah, it, the nose set me up for something. Maybe I wasn't going to love it, but I was going to find it interesting, and this is quite boring. It's a soft bittering. A little bit of, no, it's biting bittering, but it's generic biting bittering. On the other end of a generic jack-of-all-trades kind of fruitiness, a little bit of, like, nutty slash cereal grain-like sweetness, and that's it. Done. Um, not, doesn't have an epic now feel to it, doesn't have any kind of calling guard to it. It's very boring, very muted, very, yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's all I got. Let's talk about it. Is it one of the better uh, IPAs, single hopped or otherwise, that I've had as of late? No. Definitely on the outside. It just kind of, I mean, if that nose followed the taste, I'm not saying I would gush over the beer saying it was one of the best I ever had, but it would at least have some kind of personality to it toward this one lacks. Value and availability? No idea. Maybe Eric can actually chime in on it and leave you with, if you like what we like this, if you like your IPAs to be very missionary position not to have much as far as personality this is gonna do you right but uh if you're looking for a little bit of pizzazz impact or hoopspa might leave you wanting so there you go another review in the books down there if you want to talk about it massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff beer massive if you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing hopefully you guys enjoyed your review hopefully you're enjoying a little arizona deliciousness right now i think this one's one of those but and uh hopefully see you next time Cheers.